His games are timeless. His positional understanding unmatched. He is one of the greatest players of all times. He became world champion in 1975 and went on to dominate the chess world with his super tournament winning streak for over a decade. I'm delighted and in awe to have with us here at the Gibraltar Masters, the 12th world champion, Mr. Anatoly Karpov. Welcome. Thank you. Anatoly, first let's start with what it's like to be in Gibraltar, your first impressions. Oh, it's an interesting place and uh, so I think chess players are delighted to play here uh, at the corner of Europe. <laughs> and uh, for many years already, Gibraltar became one of the most important chess centers in the world. Right, and now you started playing chess when you were four years old. So it's... Right. It's been a long journey which continues. I have to ask you, what is it that you love the most about the game I, after all these years? I was uh, growing up as a chess player and at the age of 11 I became a uh, candidate master in Soviet Union. And then I was the youngest uh, national master at the age of 15. I just like to play chess and uh, to produce some ideas and uh, results became important, but much later. First, I, I just love to play and to, uh, to compete with people. <laughs> and growing up, were there uh, masters you idolized? Who had a very big impact on you in your growing up years? I think uh, Capablanca was one of the most important mm, world champions for me. And uh, I studied his games and a book, it was a good book about Capablanca games uh, written by uh, uh, international master Vasily Panov, Russian author. Yes, it was uh, quite strong influence of Capablanca style. The most exciting is all the world championship matches that you have played and I want to start with the 1975 match with Fisher which did not happen. Do you remember the first time you heard about Bobby Fisher and what was what was your feeling about it then? Of course I, I knew his name and his games uh, when I was very young because okay. uh, I followed that candidate tournament in uh, Yugoslavia and that time it was very long competition, 28 games with adjoinments, so it was like 45 days, very difficult to play. <laughs> uh, and Fischer played uh, mm, this, this uh, candidate's tournament when he was, he qualified when he was 15. And uh, at that time uh, he became grandmaster uh, grand at, the, at the age of 14, uh, very young, and the youngest, uh, not in the history, but of course, the weight of Grandmaster title was uh, much more important than nowadays. Yeah. When Fischer was going into the 72 match with Boris Paskey, how did you feel the match would turn out? What were your predictions for the match? Mm. Uh, Fischer, Fischer uh, achieved fantastic results in uh, candidates' matches against, uh, uh, against Taimanov, then Larsen, 6-0, 6, -0, 6 -0, yes. and then uh, against Petrosian with uh, four points advantage, which was great sportive result. But, uh, and of course, uh, everybody was impressed with that results. Uh, and Fischer dominated. Uh, he was very strong uh, personality. And uh, these players, I think they missed, they missed uh, mostly uh, psychologically uh, uh, that, that games. Uh, and uh, when, uh, when I had to play Fischer, I prepared, uh, I made a big job and uh, I think I had chances. I can say I had uh, better chances but still I had chances and so I considered that it will be a tough match. Was that a bit disappointing for you after Fischer's demands were not met and the match not taking place? Was it bittersweet to be world champion without a match? No, I prepared as I said. I prepared. Uh, for the match and uh, I was ready to play. Yes. But of course I couldn't force Fischer to play if he didn't appear, so <laughs> he didn't appear. I wanted to play and to, yes. uh, to, to defeat uh, Bobby. And it was my personal, personal uh, aim uh, to win that match. But uh, the leaders of 
uh, my country, they didn't like the idea because they said, you are world champion, why you, you have risk to play fish? So you are world champion, what do you want? And I said, I want to, to play the strongest player of the time and uh, I want to beat him, I have chances. And then they asked, uh, uh, are you sure you can win? I said, I have good chances, but uh, in sport, how can you be sure that you yes. win? And then uh, that's why I had problems to negotiate because they said, no, if you guarantee, I said, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot guarantee I win, but I have good chances to, to beat Fischer. Talking about good chances, there was a lot of uh, mixed views on this. Uh, Kaspro felt that, you know, you probably would have won that match considering that you were very active. You were at a, your toughest you were peaking while Fisher hadn't actually played for me for three years after yes. 72. While Spassky said that maybe Fisher would have won that match, but you would come back and win the next cycle. Mm. Okay, Fisher, Fisher had uh, a big supporter <laughs> uh, as Spassky. Spassky admired Fisher very yes. much. And uh, probably because of this admiration, Spassky missed his chances to, to play more successful against Fischer in the match. If you analyze uh, that match, Fischer won with big gap, but uh, in the middle of the match, they both lost uh, energy, and uh, so they were playing like uh, boxers uh, fighting in the last rounds of, uh, of the battle. And uh, from game 11 or 12, uh, no, I think five or six games, both sides could win. And so match could could uh, continue in a different direction. And uh, game 13, Spassky was was winning almost by force, and he missed it mm -hmm. uh, in the middle of the game. And actually, I got uh, a lot of respect among uh, uh, our uh, top players when I showed that uh, during the game I analyzed, and then I showed. Uh, Petros Jan Keris, how Spassky could, uh, could win the game. Were you at the venue at that time? Uh, no, we, we were preparing for chess Olympiad in Skopje. In okay. And we were together and then I just analyzed and then I, I showed that uh, Spassky missed a clear advantage, a big advantage, yeah. almost winning. <laughs> and then he lost that game at the end. It was a in defense. And, uh, and then uh, he missed chance and uh, he lost opportunities too. Okay. After you became world champion, you went on to play many tournaments. Uh, you were a very active world champion, so to say. Was there some sort of a motivation to prove that even though match did not happen, you were the best in the world? No, I play, played always a lot, uh, but not too much. I had norm uh, around 80 games a year. Um, but I, play, I played, of course, much more than any other world champions. And uh, probably c because I accumulated a lot of energy and preparation was very serious, which I made for Fisher. Yes. And then I could play with, almost without preparation any tournament with any, any list of the players. So you wanted to make the most of that preparation so it doesn't go waste? <laughs> yes, I, I used to all my preparation, of course. Now you played these matches with Korchnoi, then with Kasprov and um, uh, even the ones later with Kasprov were very close matches. Uh, 11 and a half, 12 mm. and a half, and it was, uh, it no. was very tough match. 12-12 12, 12 in 12, Sevilla. 12, yes, yes, in yes, Sevilla. Yes. Uh, which World Championship match do you think had the biggest impact on you? No, I don't know. But Korchner reached uh, his peak uh, in 77, uh, 78, which I didn't expect. But uh, I was sure I, I had better chances uh, in the match. 78 was almost repetition of our match of 74. Uh, I won, uh, I won uh, three games in, in, in 18 games. Koshna didn't succeed to win even one, so it was big, big, huge advantage. Three points before the end. We needed to play six games. Uh, and then suddenly I lost two games almost in a row. I lost game 19 and I lost game 21. And then uh, suddenly uh, Koshna recovered and uh, it was a big, big uh, competition uh, in the last three games. But uh, I had two whites and one black, and so I succeeded to, to manage three draws. 
even, even the last game was completely winning for me, but of course in special conditions, uh, Krishna had to win to equalize the score, and so he he played a little bit risky, and then I offered him draw in winning position because I needed just draw, and so I didn't make mistake just to try to win because. Uh, uh, I, I didn't need it. And mm -hmm. then uh, Korishno realized, uh, realized that he was losing, and when I offered draw, he didn't take a chance to lose another game. Last uh, title I won against Anand. Yes. So this was also very a big. very exciting match. For the chess world, this was also a very big moment for what, how rich the World Championship matches were, the ones with Korchnoi, and then in 84, the match with Kaspro, which after 48 games, which you were leading, was uh, stopped. Uh, you lost something like 10 kgs is what, what was written in this? About no, this. Both, both lost uh, uh, weight, and, uh, but still we, we, we had to continue, yes. uh, according to regulations. and. Uh, so it was big pressure of Kasparov supporters, and that time they took very high positions in Soviet Union, and so Kampamanas couldn't resist. He mm -hmm. made he made crazy decision, which uh, which uh, separated world uh, in two parts. Actually, if I would win that match, things would be very uh, especially different. especially six zero, I had chances. Then yes. Kasparov would never become world champion. <laughs> this is quite clear. He will be completely destroyed psychologically destroyed and yeah. because he is very emotional so I don't think he, he would become the strongest player in the world. Everyone who studies games from whether it's the World Championship matches or the Alakai Memorial that you won or the Lunar S tournament, you want to see the game again to understand what really happened. Your opponents have this feeling of helplessness. Recently, I think it was Yannick Pelletier who said that he was playing against you many years ago and he has never felt so helpless in his life on the board. <laughs> How would you describe your style of play and what was it that left your opponents so helpless? I was playing for a win uh, the, whole, uh, the whole game. Even, uh, even I had uh, uh, I had some problems to defend, but still I was looking how to defend and then how to counterattack. <laughs> and uh, I could find uh, this, I could find additional uh, possibilities how to create problems to, to my opponent uh, in chess. But also a very strong positional style. I mean, it was an aggressive positional style. Yes, yes. And uh, so probably this is a part of my style. Uh, not only positional, because Petrosian played positional chess, uh, but this was different. Yes. This was different, and uh, he played, let's say, he played uh, Karakan defense just to, to make draw. And I played Karakan defense to win. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a big difference to play very passive uh, opening, but to play for a win. And I won many games, and then, uh, and then this uh, discovery, what I did with Kamsky, uh, Playing with black, I made uh, move king eight to seven without castle yes. uh, in the middle of the game <laughs> with queens and uh, all the pieces. And so this was a big surprise, and uh, all the players of the tournament in Dortmund were coming <laughs> looking what what happened. <laughs> How do you assess the work of this new fide under Mr. Arkady Dorkovich? No, I consider this like a positive change, and uh, he is working a lot and. Uh, he succeeded to organize uh, already many uh, top-level official events, and uh, uh, he saved the situation with Saudi Arabia. Yes. And he moved that championship to Saint Petersburg, and then uh, this this year, past year in Moscow, uh, and then he made decision which uh, which decreased uh, possibilities of corruption in chess politics because they made decision in the Congress to exclude uh, proxies, yes. which was a big part of, uh, of corruptive system which Kampamanas and Ilyam created in chess world. So yes. I consider uh, this change as a very important change and uh, very positive. You're also involved with a lot of uh, work in Russia as a member of parliament. Yeah. Tell us about that. That must take a lot of your time. Yeah, this uh, full time full time job, and uh, so that's why I'm uh, I'm playing less and less, 
but uh, now now I play only rapid chess or blitz uh, blitz tournaments very seldom uh, 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 classical chess because classical chess tournaments they require longer time but even now I am playing quite good in blitz yes. and uh, only last year's uh, for instance Karyakin who uh, uh, who became world champion in blitz uh, two years ago before before that uh, tournament, uh, I was almost equal with him playing privately uh, in Blitz. Oh, you had some <laughs> training games with him? Yes, we are friends, and so okay. and so we play from time to time <laughs> privately. And uh, before before I was, uh, let's say, six years ago, I was stronger than him. So uh, you are a in specialist <laughs> in shorter time controls. Uh, yes, since, yes, since young age I played always Blitz. <laughs> you, even now I play quite quite strong in Blitz. You're also part of the organizing committee for the candidates that are coming up the tournament. Tell us in about Ekaterinburg, yes. Yes, tell us about that involvement and as a as an organizer, what expertise will you be bringing in? I gave them advice as how to organize things, and uh, mm, I believe this will be mm, uh, mm, well organized uh, candidates tournament, probably one of the best mm, because we have a top level hotel. And uh, we made agreement already. We signed agreement with the uh, owners of the hotel. Uh, so participants participants will stay there, and they will play in the tournament hall, in the hotel. Okay. And so, uh, with the climate, this is uh, not so easy. <laughs> um, but uh, if they don't want, they don't need to leave the hotel. They can stay there, and then they have, of course, fitness center and uh, so everything so they can stay there without any problems. Fortunately we have a governor who is supporting chess and I know him for a long time and so we got support of him and his deputy uh, is the chairman of organizing committee. Uh, I'm sure it will be very well organized. Well, the chess world is definitely <laughs> looking forward to it. And one of the stories around the candidates recently was the Alexeyanko wildcard. In fact, Alexeyanko will be here at the Gibraltar Masters. Do you think that in the World Championship cycle there should be a wildcard? So it was a difficult decision because we had uh, uh, Rochelle Graf, who was uh, the main, uh, the main uh, 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 how to say, candidate for this place, but that time Russia didn't have uh, even one, yes. and uh, I don't think uh, I'm in favor of a wild card for candidates uh, tournament, but I can hardly see organizers without their representative in the candidates yes. tournament, and so that's why it was a difficult decision for FIDE, but uh, that moment Russia didn't have representatives. And then they and had so, two already. And then, and then <laughs> At the last moment, we got another two. <laughs> right now, you, uh, Anatoly, have played so many different formats of the World Championship. The one that currently exists, the World Championship cycle as is right now, uh, do you think it's ideal? Do you think there's room for improvement? I don't like uh, the decisions about changing time control. Okay. And uh, I'm not in favor of this. And uh, it brings uh, closer classical chess to rapid chess. Mm. And then I don't see the reason why we have two championships and make one. But yeah. still, I believe that uh, World Championship match should be, uh, should be maybe 16 games. Longer. Um, longer, longer, yes. Yeah. And uh, also, many times, this World Championship match is going into tie breaks, which is then decided on Rapid and Blitz, actually. No, this, this, um, I'm strictly <laughs> against, <laughs> against this. Because uh, you can combine uh, classical chess and Blitz. And World Championship, uh, title, this is so important. You cannot decide it with Blitz games. But what do you do if the match is a tie? How, how do you go forward? Let's say if it's even 16 matches and it's 8-8, eight, eight, how do you... To play till first win. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Simple, but it, has to, it should be Simple. classical. Yes, yes. For a classical world championship, it should be should a classical, be classical win. Yes, yes. Okay, now no conversation about the world championship match is complete until I ask you this question, which is that who do you think will challenge Magnus Carlsen in the 2020 match? Uh, this time, uh, I think uh, uh, Dink has, uh, has better chances. Hmm. So he showed his strengths last year, and I believe he is favorite. But still, I believe Carlsen will uh, continue to be world champion. You do? At least, at least <laughs> yes, at least uh, another time. Well, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you so much for your time and thank you for inspiring us. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs>